Hello, I am Dr. Girish Nelvigi, urologist and andrologist from Nelvigi Multispeciality and Urology Hospital in Belandur, Bangalore. In continuation of my talks on cancer of the prostate, in this video I will be talking on the treatment of localized prostate cancer. Now, in my previous video, I spoke on the stages of prostate cancer and to recap, there are four stages of prostate cancer that is stage 1, 2, 3 and 4. Stage 1 and 2 are localized prostate cancer, 3 is a locally advanced prostate cancer and stage 4 is a metastatic or a disseminated prostate cancer. In this video, I will be talking on the treatment of stage 1 and 2 or localized prostate cancer. There are two main modalities of treatment of this cancer. One is by surgery, second is by radiotherapy or radiation. If you go by statistics, both are equally effective. But there are advantages as well as disadvantages of these, each of these modalities. Now let me talk on the surgeries of prostate cancer or surgeries for prostate cancer in stage 1 and 2. The treatment consists of removal of the prostate along with the seminal vesicles and the surrounding lymph nodes. This surgery can be done by three modalities. One is by open surgery technique where a cut of about 8 cm is made in the lower abdomen and the surgery is carried out or a laparoscopic surgery or a keyhole surgery where about 5 cuts of 1 cm each are made and a special instrument called laparoscope is inserted in one of the po uh, ports and then various working instruments are inserted in the other ports and the surgery is done. The third modality of surgery and which is now more popular than the previous two is a robotic surgery. In robotic surgery again there are usually five cuts and each cut is about a centimeter in size and instruments are inserted through these five cuts and the surgery is carried out. Now which is a good modality of these surgeries which is a better modality? Of anything that cuts less causes less pain. So a laparoscopic surgery or robotic surgery is a superior mode because the recovery of the patient is uh, faster, the hospital stay is less, the post-operative pain is less and the blood loss is also less. That's the reason why more and more people are doing robotic surgeries as compared to open surgeries. I will be talking about robotic surgery in this video in some um, detail because that is what is gaining in popularity now. now what is robotic surgery? Does a robot carry out the surgery? The answer is no. It is a surgeon or the human being who carries out the surgery with the help of a robot. So where does the robot come in? The surgeon sits at a console, does the surgery with the help of a robot. Now what does a robot do? Ro robot helps in magnifying the field of vision. It helps in reducing the tremors, it gives stability to the hand of the surgeon and very importantly it makes stitching or the suturing after the surgery easier. But remember this robot doesn't do it, the human being does it through the robotic arms. So the skill of the surgeon is still more important than anything else. Now. What is the cost of a robotic surgery? Because this is an important issue which most of the people are interested in. It costs on a minimum, at a minimum of 3 to 3.5 lakhs and depending on whether you are in a general ward, semi-special or special ward, it can go up to 6 lakhs or even 7 lakhs depending on the hospital also. The hospital stay after typical robotic surgery for prostate cancer is about 3 days and at the end of the surgery, the surgeon puts a catheter through the penis into the urinary bladder so that the sutures heal. This catheter 
is kept for um, 5 to 15 days depending on the surgeon and depending on how easy or difficult the surgery is. But the patient can go home with the catheter and come back after a few days for the catheter removal. What are the complications of surgery for prostate cancer? The most important complication which everyone should know is the leakage of urine after the surgery. The, when the prostate is removed, it is very near to the urinary sphincter. Urinary sphincter is a muscle which controls the urination. So even if there is a little bit of damage to the urinary sphincter and it occurs usually in prosthetic surgery because the prostate is very near to the sphincter. So there is a high chance of leakage of urine for the patient. This leakage could be mild or it could be severe. Mild leakage means whenever the patient cuffs or sneezes there could be a drop of a leak of a few drops of urine but a severe leakage means there is a constant leak of urine even when the patient is lying down and he has to use a diaper. Most of the leaks are mild and they go away within two to three months after the surgery. The severe ones take a very long time or may not go away at all. The second complications of pro any prostate surgery is erectile dysfunction. Most of the time, the nerves responsible for erection are very closely applied to the prostate and during surgery of the prostate when it is removed, these nerves are damaged or actually they are removed because sometimes if you don't remove the nerves to, uh, which supply the penis, then some of the cancer is left behind. That's why sometimes the surgeon leaves behind the nerves but majority of the times he removes them which means to say the patient is left with erection problem on a permanent basis. There are various two ways to treat the erection problem, but I will talk about that in a different video. The other common complication of prostate surgery is intraoperative. That is during surgery, there could be blood loss, which means a blood transfusion has to be done, or there could be injury to the adjacent organs, especially the rectum because rectum is very very close to the prostate sometimes if the cancer is infiltrating or very near to the rectum it may be injured and that has to be treated these are the common side effects of surgery of the prostate in a different video i'll be talking of the treatment for localized prostate cancer using radiotherapy thank you very much